Hey out there Akronites, welcome once again to Around Akron with Blue Green. Now to kick off this holiday themed episode, we're down here at Lock 3. We're gonna cover those window displays in downtown O'Neill's and Polsky building. We're gonna talk to a historic theater. We're gonna cover a couple movers and shakers all on this episode of Around Akron with Blue Green. To many, the thought of Christmas in Akron meant the O'Neill's building and the Polsky building. People would come from miles around to see the holiday and Christmas displays that they had set up. But did you know the displays are still there? We're gonna to talk to the curator or the person behind the scenes that puts all these displays together for your enjoyment. We're gonna visit the historic Coach House Theater that was actually a coach house way before it was a theater. We're gonna to talk to a mover and shaker in the performing arts world, JT Buck. Now to kick this show off, we're gonna go over to the bomb shelter to their new TV museum and talk to author extraordinaire, Joanna Wilson. She pretty much knows everything there is to know about Christmas and television episodes. Let's go see what she's all about. I've been a pop culture junkie my entire life. I grew up in front of the TV set and um, I fell in love with watching old black and white movies on, on television and when I went to college I studied film. I have a bachelor's degree in film studies, film history and along the way I also uh, got a master's degree in philosophy and I just love analyzing and evaluating pop culture and, and television and movies and it's really this these books are just an extension of my education and my background what I've always loved to do. I was watching VHS tapes and going to libraries and at video rental stores, pulling these things off of shelves. And that was a part of um, also my research. This project was a personal project uh, before it turned professional. And I was uh, re-watching an awful lot of these Rankin Bass animated classics that we love to watch, uh, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, The Year Without a Santa Claus, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Frosty the Snowman. And on, at video rental stores and at the library of shelves, I was noticing there was an awful lot of Christmas entertainment around these programs as well. And uh, many of these titles I hadn't seen in a long time, some I'd never seen before. And considering I was a pop culture junkie, I had to see this stuff again. And I was pulling them off the shelves and um, re-watching them and uh, discovering that uh, there's a special connection that we have with Christmas entertainment that's really different than we the kind of entertainment that we watch year round. There's a, a nostalgia and an emotionality and, and a meaning that comes with Christmas entertainment that connects us. Uh, and we watch these things a little bit differently. And uh, many of these titles are very similar. And so I had to keep track of these um, programs that I was watching. So I wasn't watching the same programs again and again. I was keeping track of year and the cast, maybe the director, uh, what format it was in. And uh, I soon learned that the, uh, Christmas entertainment is an industry in and of itself. And um, I wasn't just interested in this, in this. My friends and my family were asking me questions about my research. And I found that it's not just me. A lot of people are very interested in Christmas entertainment and, and that entertainment that they watched as kids and helps form a meaningful Christmas experience for them. And I turned my a uh, personal project into something professional, which became the encyclopedia. Well, it came from the research of the encyclopedia. Since I'm the girl that's seen everything, I've seen everything, um, Christmas entertainment, these are the more unusual and the more rare uh, entertainments and sort of what breaks uh, our expectations about uh, Christmas entertainment entertainment in general. So it's uh, Christmas horror, Christmas animation for adult tastes, uh, Christmas with a dark theme, uh, science fiction Christmas. Santa is a fantasy character, certainly, but um, add time travel or uh, space exploration and, and um, you've got a completely different sort of uh, fan base right there. There's actually quite a bit of good Christmas uh, um, sci-fi and um, so if you're tired of watching the same old Christmas specials I make tons of suggestions of what uh, else is out there. An awful lot of people connect to Christmas and the Christmas spirit through music 
and I have discovered that it is in order to write about uh, Christmas entertainment in general, I have to do an awful lot of research on Christmas music as well. And um, one of the benefits of that is I uh, was able to write this book, which is the best musical performances in uh, Christmas TV episodes, sitcoms, and dramas. So everything from Ricky and Lucy singing Jingle Bells in the Christmas episode of I Love Lucy to more contemporary shows like Community and Glee, which also incorporate an awful lot of music into their holiday episodes. This doesn't have anything to do with, you know, national television programming or Christmas movies. So this is local history about Akron. And, uh, it's not just the story of Archie, which I find a fascinating story, but it's also the context that Archie was created out of. Archie was meant to compete at Chapel Hill Mall uh, with what was happening on Main Street at the time. Shoppers were used to shopping at O'Neill's and Polsky's along Main Street. And um, when Chapel Hill was created in, in the late 60s and, and created Archie, he was meant to draw shoppers' attention over to the mall in the suburbs. But so it's the history of what was going on at Christmas at O'Neill's and Polsky's, their fabulous window displays, the very elaborate in-store walkthrough displays, and the whole history of, of that retailing on Main Street um, with the parades and um, the lights and the decorations. A lot of research and a lot of primary sources. I put myself in front of the television and watch uh, these programs in order to uh, write about them, uh, not only summarize them, but put together cast and, and year and, and add commentary and, and connect it to the larger uh, Christmas entertainment uh, field. Um, but it's, yeah, research heavy and that's what I love about it watching the television and one of the things I love most about this is watching these rare old TV specials that maybe haven't been seen in decades or very few people even know about what these things are. I love going back and re-watching these old specials. Next up we're gonna visit the Coach House Theater. Now this place has a lot of history to it. It was an actual Coach House way before it was a theater. Let's go see what this place is all about. Coach House Theater is one of America's oldest, longest running, continuous community theaters. 90 years this year, you know, this is its 90th season. That's a huge achievement in and of itself. But the temptation that goes along with that is to view Coach House as an old theater, you know, kind of doing things in an old way. Uh, but the, the 90th birthday, if anything, is an opportunity to be all things new again. So when you're looking at Coach House going forward, maybe we can do what the founders of Coach House Theater did originally, which is instead of looking at this as an old carriage barn, we look at it as a new theater, okay? Which is what they did day one. Uh, so let's take this old theater and turn it into a new space where West Hill, Five Points, and Akron can form new relationships, have uh, create new community. Um, it's still very good for that. There's another 90 years at least in this building of, of that kind of activity. And so if you're interested in riding, riding that ride, then this is the place for you. I think this location is, uh, it's a carriage barn that was built in service of the mansion that still sits across the parking lot. It's the home to the Akron Women's City Club. Uh, when the mansion was built, it was built by uh, a president of B.F. Goodrich. It housed him and his family for a while. Uh, it was actually, it, it housed Frank, uh, or the Cyberling family while they were building Stan Hewitt. This was where they lived. Uh, so the, it, it had a couple of different owners before the Akron Women's City Club bought the, the mansion. The Akron Women's City Club did exist. It was, it was founded downtown. Uh, so it had a couple of different locations downtown before it moved up to, to this mansion. And then in, in the 1930s, it became the home of the Akron Women's City Club. So uh, at a certain point, this carriage barn was uh, retrofitted into to house the theatrical productions. Uh, you know, I, just by way of background, the Akron Women's City Club really came together at a time when most community organizations did drama as a regular part of their life. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> for example, almost every club on the University of Akron campus, from the science club to the biology club to the English club, you know, they would all do a, a play every year as you know, just a, a thing to do before radio, before television. You know. So, uh, so the, the Akron Women's City Club had a little drama unit, a little drama group, and this became their home. I think it's a real power spot. Um, I, I had this conversation with several other historians in the, in the area where it, we are here on Portage Path, and Portage Path kind of runs uh, along the sort of crown of West Hill from the valley all the way down to, to the Summit Lake area. And all along the way, what began as probably an animal trail between the two bodies of water, then became you know, a, a, a transportation route for the natives who lived here, and then became uh, you know, the western boundary of the United States for a few years, and then it's gone on to become the street along which all of Akron's movers and shakers had to have their mansion. And to this day, with places like Highland Square and Five Points and the Summit Lake neighborhood, uh, there are uh, and Route 59 and 70, all these points along the way, depending on how big of a believer you are in feng shui maybe, there's something about this geography that's really powerful. When you're sitting up here and you look out over this vista, I don't know if it's just the view, but something about this, this stretch of, of real estate is really important. Uh, it seems to magnetize in some ways some really interesting uh, activity. So, um, so the view from the mansion, I think, would be very, you know, if, if I ran over you know, BF Goodrich, I would want to put my house in a power spot, too. It's always a hot mess, it seems. You know, it's always messy and creative. In theater, there are always tempers and egos, and we all uh, get into arguments with each other, <laughs> and we may go a few months without talking to each other. Uh, and so many times I have been involved in shows in this town where I have sworn up and down that I'm never doing this again, and then the show closes and I'm right there back at the next set of auditions. Uh, it's because we care so much, and we're so passionate, and we're exposing ourselves and being so vulnerable in this art form. You, you don't get more vulnerable than going to some very difficult emotional place when you're sitting five feet from the front row in front of complete strangers. So we are always going to be a little raw and a little edgy in the theater, uh, and we're always gonna be a little messy and a little chaotic, but we are always going to be here. And um, I think that's really exciting. Next up, we're going to talk to a mover and shaker here in Akron. Now, this guy is multi-talented in the performing arts realm. His name is J.T. Buck. Now, let's go see what this guy's all about. Well, Christmas in Akron, the musical, is a world premiere uh, set in a famous downtown Akron department store. Uh, it's a brand new show written by an Akron native. Uh, it's got a lovely score, uh, charming music, some Christmas carols, and some new tunes. Uh, and a, a, a fun plot uh, that I think everybody will resonate with if you've ever uh, been in a situation where you've had to put together a project at the last minute, <laughs> no time, no money. It's about a group of store employees who are uh, responsible for putting on the annual O'Neill's Christmas Spectacular. Uh, and they're given no time and no budget to do it. So uh, mayhem ensues, it's a lot of fun. Well, right now, uh, Coach House Theater itself is a staff of one, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of everything. I'm working with a fantastic uh, small army of volunteers, uh, but I get to do a little bit of everything. I'm directing the show uh, and also working with the marketing, the PR, uh, some of the design work for the technical elements. Uh, so it's really a great uh, hands-on responsibility, but I feel like a uh, the, the ringleader of a really uh, charming circus. Well, I think this is one of the reasons why I'm, uh, why I'm the person for the job here at Coach House right now is that I've, uh, for the last 20 years, I've really been, uh, I, I consider myself kind of a theatrical Swiss Army knife. Uh, you know, I've got a little bit of everything in my toolkit. I can play the piano, uh, I've got some musical training, uh, I have experience as a playwright, as a composer, as a director. I've worked in just about every job in the theater except actually running the theater. So, uh, which is really helpful uh, experience when you are actually in the position of being an artistic director because uh, all of those different pots of knowledge uh, are called on and also it gives me a, a great opportunity to understand when I'm when I'm collaborating with my team uh, I can speak a little lighting designer I can speak a little musician I can speak a little actor and these, these are all different vocabularies but it really helps make the collaboration go more smoothly if the person who is 
the director can communicate with everybody on the team uh, in their language, so to speak. When people think about Coach House Theater and this neighborhood, um, what I hope people feel is that this is um, quite literally, quite literally, Akron's fanciest garage. You know, the, the Coach House itself was a garage for you know uh, for the departments or for the um, <laughs> for the mansion across the parking lot, and uh, so this this idea that this is a place that where you can come and play. You know, this is a community venue. Uh, for a long time, Coach House Theater has been sort of a private, you know, entertainment venue for a pretty limited audience. But this this building has so much more to offer the community. And um, so, you know, what we're going to do is open up the garage and and, and let artists come and play, uh, and let audiences come and enjoy that. And already we've had singer-songwriters and opera companies and, uh, and visual artists and filmmakers who've all uh, discovered this place in the last few months. And uh, I don't intend to put Coach House on Main Street. You know, I don't want this, I don't see this as being a place where you, uh, where, where it's just instantly available. But if you come and search for us, if you come and take a little journey to the back of this parking lot, what you'll find is that this is a, a precious little gem and everybody who makes their way here is going to find a, a creative home here, I think. So that's the goal anyway. Uh, not those moves from last year. The first thing is never quit. Um, and you'll want to a lot because it's a hard business, the musical theater. It's, you know, it's especially coming out of Akron, Ohio, I think we don't have a huge theater culture here. Like if you're a kid in New York City, you wake up and everybody goes to the theater. Here, you kind of have to find it. So be relentless, you know, and, and just keep doing it. Doing it, doing it, doing it is the main thing. Uh, find your, your, if your school is doing little plays, do them. If you, you've got some really great theaters here in Akron, they're doing great work for all ages in almost every neighborhood now, find them, get involved, dive in, and, and just do it. Um, that's the main thing. But also I think, uh, you know, you've got access now thanks to YouTube and, uh, and uh, all sorts of internet uh, resources and uh, thanks to iTunes and the streaming services to listen and watch everything. It's all out there. Um, when I was growing up, we didn't quite have that technology yet, so you really had to dig deep into the library to find stuff. Uh, but just be a sponge and absorb all of it and, uh, and, and you know, enjoy it you know, because it's, it's, it's all there. And know that you're, you're stepping into an Akron right now that has a growing art scene and you have an opportunity here to make something. So if, 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 if they're not doing the musical you want or if you've got a story you want to tell or if you think you can write something better than what's being put on stage, fine, go ahead and do it. Uh, the more new out there, the better, even if it's only in your backyard. I think I did my first show that I kind of came up with on my own in my driveway. You know, so it's you just do it. And what you'll find is that in Akron, there's a growing community of people out there who will, who will be around for you. Now to wrap this nostalgic show up, we're here at the O'Neill's building, and right across the street is the Polsky building. Now much like the Wizard of Oz, there's a person behind the scenes. We're gonna go talk to the curator. Her name is Jeannie. Let's go see what she's all about. When I graduated high school, my, I was signed up to go to Kent State. I applied for a job at O'Neill's and the woman asked me, what, why do you want to work at O'Neill's? And I said, because I want to do the windows at Christmas. And she said, we don't do those anymore. It's probably not going to happen at all soon. I proved her different. I moved to Atlanta. Lived there for 32 years. My first job back was doing the windows for O'Neill's. So I had to wait a little while, but it all came true. The process pretty much never ends. Um, I start usually in about July sketching out because they prefer that everything not be in the same spot. And I have people ask me all the time, why don't you just throw a cover over it and uncover it next year? One, I don't know if I have the space, because the space can change. Right now we're using um, the, the old O'Neill's building, which if it gets sold, 
those windows are gone and I have to find somewhere else. Akron U has graciously let us use their windows for years. Um, the landmark building, they're going to start construction, so I won't have that. So I'm always looking for spaces. I spent all summer working on motors, reconstructing hands. We tried to get everyone hands this year. That was the summer of hands, so pretty much all the characters had hands. Last year, most of the characters had this, maybe one finger or thumb or so worked on hands and broken arms. The, most of the characters are made of a, of a composite. It's a, kind of a plaster paper mache. And sitting in a damp basement, getting moved around, the age, they just, some of the stuff just crumbles. So we're trying to reconstruct. It doesn't take much for the arm to break. And I use a lot of duct tape when, on the ones that don't. So I start my sketches, figure out the windows, start my sketches in July, August, move things around, and then I start having everything brought up um, first of September, as soon as we close down lot three. Unbox everything, and you will find me down here on Thanksgiving, tweaking, checking electrical, making sure all the timers work, Who's working on Wednesday night isn't particularly working on Thursday when I plug them in or Friday. And then I walk the, I walk the windows every single night that they're on. There's la the landmark building, there's two in the landmark. There's one in between the Civic and the landmark building which is it's better to see during the day because there's no power in there. Um, I have the O'Neills and then across the street on both sides of Polsky's University and State Street. So there's three windows on each side of Polsky's and eight over here. And I'm amazed at people that say, you know, what do you do? And I tell them what I do for a living. And they're like, oh, I've never seen the windows. And I'm like, oh, I need to get, that's another thing, to get the word out. So I'm very excited about um, you doing this piece on in the windows. And it, it's important. It's important to Akron. It's important to the history. Um, and the best part, I had a little kid on Friday. His grandparents thought the parade was Friday and brought them down and I hadn't turned the, the actual power on and he was looking through the windows and um, I said hang on a second and I ran in and I flipped them all on and he was just running from window to window and he ran up and he hugged me around the legs and he said thank you thank you and that right there that's that's worth the 12 15 hour days that it takes to put this together when you see the little slime across the, the bottom of the windows where all the noses and fingers were staring at them. It's, it's a big part of my life. It's a part that I had thought about years ago, hoping that I had contacted Macy's, I contacted Saks about what do they do with all their uh, window displays at the end of the season because I was like this has got to come back f to Akron it was important to me it was a fun time and I think sometimes with everything that's going on it's gives you a way to step back and forget about everything for a minute and I do see I watch people looking at the windows and you'll see people just bustling down the street and all of a sudden they look at the window and they you see them stop for a second and just kind of that relax of you know, taking them back, and that, that's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> it, it's important to me. Thank you for watching yet another episode of Around Akron with Blue Green. Now, if you have an idea for a segment or you just want to say hey, you can reach out on the website at www.aroundakronwithbluegreen, or you can reach me on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
we'll see you next time on Around Akron with Blue Green.